Uh, we do have a quorum present. Um, the mayor, Mayor Euchard, is sick tonight, so he cannot be here. We wish him well. First item is the invocation given by Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Vaughn and the pledge to the flags, Councilman Garina. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, please grant us your graciousness through your wisdom, your justice, and your charity to all the people congregated here tonight. And also, we'd like to ask your blessing for the military and their families who give so much and who have made it possible for us to have this meeting under these circumstances. And we also would like to ask that you bestow your blessing on all your children, no matter wherever they may be. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Face the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. ones here tonight for the Louisville ISD students that are to be, re be recognized. The city of Louisville wishes to recognize the following Louisville ISD students for their strong work ethics and team leadership. Randy Nicholson, volleyball captain. Uh, Crystal Nicholson, volleyball captain. Hernandez. Okay. Cesar Cruz. That's you. Okay. Uh, Wesley Townsend. Todd White. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. The City of Louisville is, is being awarded the 16th Annual Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award for 2011. The City of Louisville has received the, the award for 13 consecutive years and is one of only 35 governmental agencies in Texas and one of only 57 cities in the U.S. to receive the award. The Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award is, is designed to recognize organizational excellence in procurement. The award is achieved by those organizations that demonstrate excellence in procurement by obtaining a high score on a rating of standardized criteria. The program is designed to measure innovative, oh, excuse me, innovation, professionalism, e-procurement, productivity, and leadership attributes of the procurement function. So, there you go. Thank you. There you go. Okay. I, the, it says the 2011 Nath National Purchas Purchasing Institute's 16th Annual Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award. Then gives all the sponsors. So thank you. Do you have anything to say? Um, Mayor Pro Tem Durham, I'd like to thank you, and I'd like to thank all the City Council for all the support that you give us throughout the year. Uh, it really means a lot to us. Thank you very much for the presentation tonight and the recognition. I would like to recognize at this time the two buyers that we have in the city and ask that they stand. That's Rebecca Hunter and Lisa Cloud. <laughs> On behalf of purchasing, thank you again very much. Okay. Brian Hogan. The City of Louisville is being awarded a Certificate for Excellence in Financial Reporting Award for the period ending September 30th, 2010 by the Government Finance, Finance Officers Association. The Certificate of Achievement is the highest form of recognition in governmental accounting and financial reporting, and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by government and uh, its management. This is the 22nd consecutive year the City has received this award. An award for financial reporting achievement has been awarded to the individual department or agency designated by the government as primarily responsible for preparing the award-winning CAFR. So, congratulations. Okay. Same thing. Thank you again, Mayor Pro Tem Durham and Council for your continued support. Uh, we are proud of the award, thankful for the resources you provide to make this possible. Um, it, it is an award that we're extremely proud of. There are roughly 80,000 government entities that participate in this program, and only about 3,700 or less than 5 percent actually receive that. Um, I would like to recognize staff members as well and ask them to stand. Nisha Walker, who's one of our accountants. Mandy Robinson, who's also an accountant and Donna Kurth, who's our internal auditor that also assists us with schedule preparation. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item is the uh, Visitor's Citizen, Citizens Forum. At this time, any person with business before the council not scheduled on the agenda may speak to the council. No formal action will be taken on these items at this meeting. And I do have one speaker. Uh, Paige Chauvin. Welcome. If I can get your name and address for the record, please. Paige Chauvin, 617 Price Drive, Louisville, 75067, right behind Louisville High School and about a mile away from the um, police department. Um, thank you, Councilman, for letting me come today and talking to you specifically today. I apologize. Um, 
I come before you today to ask that a higher priority be put onto 911 calls pertaining to burglary of a habitat. On Monday, January 9th, cold, raining, 40 degrees, nobody was outside watching. I left my home at 9.30 like I do often to go to work. And at 5.30 that evening, my husband came home with our 10-year-old and our 7-year-old to find that the front door had been busted in, our house had been ransacked, our belongings had been gone through, and stolen. He did as anyone would have, and he called 911. The dispatch officer asked if anyone was in the house, so he left our children outside, scared, and went inside to check, something he still regrets doing today. Because there was no one in the house, our home invasion became a low priority to the Louisville Police Department. That was the next call he made. As normal, on a Monday afternoon, when I'm not sitting in city council meetings or, PT or school board meetings, I was in a PTA meeting. Within 10 minutes, I was home. 20 minutes after the original 911 call, I made a second call. Where are the officers? My children are scared. I was told to put them in the car and to start the vehicle, that it, we were in the middle of shift change and that someone would be there as soon as possible. Most of you know me well enough to know that I'm not just going to put my children in the car. So I made as many phone calls as I could to the parents that were not in the PTA meeting with me and found a friend in Flower Mound in Bridalwood that would take my children so that my husband and I could deal with this emergency. I left my home, I drove to Bridalwood, dropped off the children, said hello, said thank you, took some of her encouraging words, came back home, and only then, an hour after the original 911 call, was an officer at my home. Though our family felt violated by the burglars, we were even more angered and let down because our emergency was not deemed important. Our belonging and our safety didn't matter because it was shift change. As a sister of a city officer, as a cousin of many state officers, as a friend of many state officers and dispatch officers, I understand the demands that are needed every day on our peace officers, and I thank you for all you do. But I ask that for the families in the future, that when their home, their peace, their place has been disturbed, it does not become just another burglary call, just another already happened call, that someone respond and respond quickly to give a feeling of safety and security back to our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't have any other cards on that. Does anybody else wish to speak in the Visitor Citizens Forum? Okay, we'll go to the next item. Uh, Consent agenda. All of the following items on the consent agenda are considered to be self-explanatory by the council and will be enacted, uh, on, enacted on with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen wishes uh, so request. For a citizen to request removal of an item, a speaker card must be filled out and submitted to the city secretary. Uh, we have asked to pull number two on this. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Move to approve. Okay. Uh, motion by Councilman uh, Ferguson, Nougat, and a second by <laughs> Councilman Gilmore. All this in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Uh, item number two approval of a supplemental appropriation in the amount of 55000 for the professional services agreement with Wynn Jackson, Inc for services related to the Louisville Lake Master Plan from the Utility Capital Funds and uh, authorization for the city manager to execute the contract. The firm of Wynn Jackson was retained by the city in November of 2010 to assist in identifying opportunities and constraints of developing the Louisville Lake frontage, meet with shareholders, and develop concept plans and a business plan for implementation of the project. The initial budget for completing the work was estimated at $420,000, of which $210,000 was appropriated in 2010. The plan included 10 phases. The work has been ongoing for the past year, and $39,146 has been spent for completion of the four initial phases. The total cost of the project uh, until completion of phase nine and writing a business implementation plan 
is now estimated at $265,000, which is a reduction from the original estimate of $420,000. An additional appropriation of $55,000 to the existing funds is needed to complete this phase of the project. Because the agreement also involves planning for utility service, an appropriation from Utility Capital Projects Fund is requested. And the staff recommendation is that the council approve the supplemental appropriation and all other related items as set forth in the caption above. <coughs> uh, like first to get uh, staff uh, comments on this, if you can give us a little background on that, city manager. Uh, as the comments described, uh, this is the uh, remaining four phases, five through nine. Uh, there's only one more phase after that, which is phase 10, which would be only conducted after a follow-up meeting with the council. Uh, this is really the meat of the original proposal uh, where the business plan and more detailed plans related to the costs and uh, locations and uh, infrastructure and utility needs are detailed and articulated in, in much more uh, detail. So to complete that, uh, we need the uh, existing appropriation amended by $55,000. Uh, back when we originally set this up, uh, it's much like a retainer uh, for an attorney. Uh, we're billing on an hourly basis and uh, watching each uh, billing very closely to make sure that there's enough funds to complete the project, but uh, could be more, could be less, depending on how much work has to be done. Again, it's uh, somewhat dependent on what the consultants encounter as they go through the process. So far, uh, it's been substantially less than what we estimated, uh, which is why there's 170000 left of the original appropriation. So uh, we're requesting an additional fifty-five to complete it through uh, that phase nine. Councilman Grena, you wish to pull this one, so we'll start with you. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be voting no against this, and I think the citizens should know why. Back in November 1st of 2010, I voted for the original appropriation because we were listening to, I was listening to all the, you know, pros and cons to it. I personally, um, there's several reasons why I'm going to vote no to it. Number one is, I really don't think that the citizens want their elected officials to be developer with their tax dollars. Now, I'm grateful that they only spent $40,000 instead of the $210,000. I say, let's, I heard what they had to say. If I was a private um, developer, I would pick Win Jackson. They are a very good company. They're a very professional company. And frankly, I've been very impressed with their work. If this goes through and passes, I will do whatever I can to make sure it's done efficiently and effectively without waste. But I really don't think the citizens want um, us to be playing developer up on the lakefront up there, that we should be really concentrating on saving money. In the last few years of the uh, annual budget retreats, we've been talking and really not wanting to raise taxes. Uh, Councilman Durham, you know, he, he's been on this council for almost 20 years. He sees what's coming, and he's been recommending that we're going to have to sooner or later. And he's wise in that, in his experience in that. I would like to tighten up the belt, not spend the money, and try to avoid raising taxes this next year. It's getting to a point where we're going to have to just to pay our bills or, or really cut something out. That's why I'm always very conservative on where we spend money. Can it be used for um, streets and curbs versus giving it away or tax dollars on private transactions, whatever you might want to call it. Um, is it a neat project to have? Yes, I would love to have a, I'm going to throw out a name, a Gaylord type thing here in Louisville. But I really think it should be done more on in the private sector and uh, that's where the public-private partnership should be, not where we're out there actively getting the consultants to see what we can do to, you know, um, what to purchase, what to do, whatever. I, I know that the plants that they have look very nice, and I'd like to see them, and where it's gonna be is, well, according to the plants that you've seen on the internet, is in the Corps of Engineer property that we control. But I would sure like to see a private developer take the lead on it and spend the money doing the research on it than our taxpayers. 
So I'll be voting no, and I'd like to take our losses and, and stop spending on this project. That's why I'm voting no. Um, that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Councilor Gilmore. Uh, the lake side is, is something that uh, a lot of citizens have talked to me about because it's such a unique venue that we have. I mean, it's one of the few marquee spaces we have left to develop. Um, and the biggest concern that they have is that they want to make sure that the amenities that we have are protected and the way of life that they've come to expect um, with the lake and how they interact with that lake is protected. If we allow a private developer to go in there and just do what they want, the protection of those amenities that the uh, citizens have asked for and, and uh, find are important, you, you tend to uh, lose that control. So I believe that this is a wise investment. The, the city council can help direct that development so that it best fits citizen input and best fits that requirement for quality of life that citizens have expressed to me. And I will be voting in favor of this. Mayor, I just want to clarify, we control it. I'm not ever talking about losing control. We can still direct it with someone else taking the lead and directing them. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. Um, Ferguson. To I'm going to be in favor of this. Um, first of all, uh, what strikes me is that this was something that the uh, literally a quorum that no longer is in place um, approved this action in 2010. Uh, three of those councilmen are no longer on this council. So to some extent, I'm going to defer to their, um, the research they did and assume that they did their due diligence uh, and not question um, that council's judgment. Secondly, uh, this is to identify opportunity for development, um, you know, opportunities, sorry, uh, to, to identify development opportunities. It's not to actually do development. Um, it's a competitive world out there with other cities. Uh, we can look over our shoulder, for example, at Grapevine. You mentioned the Gaylord. Uh, Grapevine did considerable due diligence and effort to develop that er or to attract development in that area, and certainly that's been a success for them. Uh, thirdly, the cost of this project is actually being substantially reduced, so we're getting a lot more for our money than we had anticipated. And fourthly, if the concern is tax dollars, then developing that area to its best potential is certainly a source of those tax dollars. So the failure to do so would be, a, to me, a business mistake. So I'm going to be in favor. Councilman Vaughn. Mayor, I'm in favor of the project. I feel like now is the time with the economy the way it is, with the ability to get low interest loans, now is the time to go forward. If we wait for a partnership at down the road, I feel that we are at the mercy of things that we have less control of. So therefore, I will be voting for it. Okay, thank you. I am also in favor of this. Uh, Councilman Karina, do you have a motion? Um, motion to, I guess you've made the motion to approve. Second. second. We have second. a motion to approve by Councilman Karina. Second. Uh, a motion, uh, second by Councilman Ferguson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Nay. Okay. Shoot. Okay. Motion carries uh, with one negative on that. <coughs> Item number three, consideration of four variances to the Louisville City Code, Chapter 9.5, Old Town Development regarding driveways and landscaping <coughs> for Aspen Healthcare Services located at 314 West Main Street, as requested by Long Acre Construction representing the owners. The subject site is currently operating as Aspen Healthcare Services. The, uh, the owners are proposing a 2,200 square foot two-story addition to accommodate the growth of the business for additional office use. Staff has reviewed and approved the Old Town Development Plan pending approval of four variances, including A, to allow a new second driveway, 56 feet from the existing driveway, in lieu of the required 100-foot driveway separation required on Main Street. 
B, to allow the second driveway to be 10 feet wide in lieu of the required 15 feet for one-way driveways. C, to waive the 10-foot landscape buffer requirement. And D, to allow three new parking spaces on the east side of the building to have 18 feet of maneuverability in lieu of the required 24 feet. The recommendation from staff is that the council approve the variances set forth in the caption above. We do have uh, Daniel Longacre that is here. They do not wish to speak, but they are here to answer any questions. Uh, Councilman Gilmore. If there's no questions, I uh, move to approve. Second. Okay, we, we have a motion by Councilman Gilmore to approve and a second by Councilman Garina. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Nay. Okay. Motion carries with one nay vote. Number four <coughs> is consideration of acceptance of resignations of Kim, Jim Gallegos from place number four and Margie Rochelle from place number five on the I-35 corridor plan advisory committee. Consideration of acceptance of resignations of Ashley McClellan from place number one and Jim Gallegos on place number eight on the Arts Advisory Board. Uh, declare vac vacancies exist on the I-35 Corridor Plan Advisory Committee and the Arts Advisory Board and consideration of appointments to place number four and number five on the I-35 Corridor Plan Advisory Committee and place number one and eight on the Arts Advisory Committee. Uh, Gallegos and Rochelle have been have both submitted their resignations from place number four, Planning and Zoning Representative, and place number five, Park Board Representative, on the I-35 Corridor Plan Advisory Committee due to their respective moves to other cities. Ashley McClellan and Gallegos are also both resigning from place number one, business located in Louisville representative, and place number eight, Louisville resident representative, on the Arts Advisory Board. The City Council will need to consider new appointees to fill these vacancies. Re staff recommendation is the City Council accept the resignations and uh, consider declaring vacancies and appointments as set forth in the caption above. Councilman Ferguson. Uh, I move to declare a vacancy and um, nominate uh, for the position held by Jim Gallegos, uh, PNZ Commissioner on I-35, Michael Coleman, and for the position held by Mar Marjorie Rochelle, which is Park Board, uh, Callie Browning. Uh, for the Arts Board vacancy, again, move to declare a vacancy and um, nominate um, Ken Lannon for that position, a Louisville citizen on the Arts Board. And the business is also another. And the business one. We're going to have position. a. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, yeah, you're right. And the uh, Craig, Ro uh, is it Craig Roberts? Craig Roberts. Craig Roberts. Craig for the um, business representative on the Arts Board. Second. I missed that. Okay, we have a motion uh, by Councilman Ferguson and a second by Councilman Gilmore. Uh, the motion is to ex uh, declare a vacancy and to approve the ones that were listed. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, number five, consideration of declaring a vacancy in place number seven on the Community Development Block Grant Advisory Board and alternate place number one on the ZBOA, and consideration of appointments to fill the vacancies on the CDBG and ZBOA. In accordance with City Council's attendance policy, Charita Bradley, place number seven, CDBG, and Rochelle Jones, alternate place number one, ZBOA, have both missed three consecutive meetings on their respective boards and are automatically removed from membership. The Council will need to consider new appointees to these two positions. Staff recommendation is to uh, consider declaring vacancies and appointments as set forth in the caption above. Councilman Vaughn. Mayor, I would like to 
nominate Crystal Nellinson for the Zoning Board of Adjustment. And the other was the CDGB? Yes. I would like to nominate Steve Hill. I'll second that. Oh, I'm sorry, Mayor. I've just been informed. I need to declare that there's a vacancy. Okay. And I nominate the, the people that I mentioned. Okay. Uh, I'd ask a question on this for council. If, if there are other nominations, do we need to ask for them at this point? It's my understanding that's a motion. So it, you, you'll just have to deal with the motion. And then if, if you know there are others, if, if this motion fails, you can just separate them and take them okay. one, one by one. Okay. We have a motion for, uh, to declare a vacancy, uh, and then Steve Hill for CDBG and Ellingson? Yes, sir. Crystal, for, Crystal Ellingson. Okay, for ZBOA. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, it passes three to two. Three to two? I think that's correct. That was you. Oh, excuse it, me. I, I was an aye. I voted aye. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do we need to call for the. Hmm? Did Julie get it? Okay. You got it? Okay. Okay, number six, uh, consideration of declaring a vacancy in place number three on the PNZ and consideration of an appointment to fill the vacancy in place number three on PNZ uh, with the recent election of uh, R. Neil Ferguson. Who is that? <laughs> to the City Council, a vacancy has been created in place number three on the PNZ Commission. City Council will need to consider an appointment to fill this vacancy. Um, Councilman Garina. Um, I just want to make a comment about to the citizens out there. Um, I really encourage visiting these committees if you want to apply to them. I really do. I think that you need to know what's going on in the committees. And it's one of the things that I really, uh, you know, consider valuable is if that you make an effort to go to that. Uh, all the people that apply for these committees are, are all uh, qualified. They're all good. Um, I like to rotate people in. This is my opinion. I, I'm not going to ex expound on what anybody else says, if they do or don't. But um, I do believe that you give citizens a try, and you'll be surprised in what they can offer and what they can bring. So uh, being that they are advisory, we are, up on the council, still responsible for the final decisions that are made. Um, and uh, for that, I encourage that the members of these committees get to know us and maybe understand what we're looking for. Maybe a little direction from each one of us uh, would help. It's one of the things that I think the, the committees lack a little bit is a little bit from us because sometimes we let committees go do their thing under the, they might have a direction from a staff member being there and helps them guide them on their way. But that doesn't mean it's wrong or right. It just depends on who's up here and what our ideals are. But anyway, um, for P and Z, um, I want to uh, make a motion to accept the resignation and declare an opening and uh, recommend uh, La Vib Basta for uh, place number three on P and Z. Okay. Is there a second? Second. I can ask a question. Can I second that? I will second that. Call the vote. All those in favor of the motion, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. 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 Okay. Does not pass. Is there another motion? Move for uh, Brent Daniels for PNZ. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. I second. Okay. We have a motion by Councilman Gilmore and a second by Councilman Vaughn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, reports, start with you, Nika. 
Nothing? 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 No, sir. Okay. You're doing good. I'm not going to ask about the leg. Uh, <laughs> Donna, yes? I do. Uh, this week at the MCL Grand, we have Pegasus Theater presenting the Frequency of Death that will start Thursday and run through Sunday. Uh, each performance is at 8 p.m. and tickets are available online. And go to our website because I don't see Pegasus Theater uh, website listed here, but it should be a great performance. Okay. I've heard a lot of positive things about the performances that are going on there. I've also heard that there's not a full house every night. So just take that in consideration. So it should be a nice uh, thing to go to. Next. Nothing? Yes. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, Council, I'm uh, honored and also saddened to announce the retirement of our city engineer, uh, Mr. T.S. Kumar, after 26-plus uh, years of service with the city. We'll be honoring uh, Kumar uh, next Monday the 30th at the community room from 3 to 5 with a brief presentation starting around 3.30-ish. So come out and uh, say farewell. and. Uh, Again, uh, we're going to miss him as a professional. We're going to miss him as a friend, and uh, we'll wish him well. I was wondering, does he have season tickets to the Mavericks at this point? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're working on that, where his nose won't bleed. Okay. Assistant City Manager. <clears throat> Councilman Garina. I do want to relay my sentiments for someone who's dedicated so many years of their life to this city. I wish he was here tonight. We'd give him a standing ovation, but uh, it's just amazing that we have such great people here. Also want to uh, relay about our beautiful building across the street over here, that Art Center, the, excuse me, the, uh, the MCL Grand. Yes, I'm sorry, Dane Bramage. Anyway, I, uh, it, it's a beautiful building. If you haven't seen one of our jewels here in Louisville, uh, I encourage you to promote it, be involved, uh, come out here. Great prices, really great shows, and the uh, just great seats. Thank you. Councilor Gilmore. I am um, happy to uh, thank the Parks Department. Um, my daughter finally found a Saturday night out that um, my wife would allow her to go to. Hair painting is a no-no. Um, but uh, last uh, Saturday, uh, my daughter's finally big enough to go roaming about on her own with a gang of friends over at the Herring uh, facilities and she had a blast. So thank you guys for putting on something that helps our kids stay entertained um, and helps get the kids out of the house so mom and dad can have a free night. So thank you so much. Okay. City Manager? No, sir. Okay. Councilman Ferguson? Um, Donna, I promise I won't do this to you every time. I was going to say a little bit more about frequency of death. Uh, this is um, actually usually presented as several small plays in one evening uh, which three kind of varies depending on the evening but they're based on um, old film noir movies so they're uh, detective murder mysteries typically and uh, they're done entirely in black and white even the paint and makeup is everything is black and white so you think you're watching an old black and white movie and they actually have uh, their uh, makeup is a protected trade secret so They've honed this uh, over the years and took, took quite an entertaining show, so I encourage everybody to go see that. Uh, I want to add to um, the comment I'm sorry to hear. We're losing uh, Mr. Kumar, I think, from my limited exposure. He was an incredibly talented man, and we're going to really miss him. Uh, the last thing is that uh, I want to wish uh, everyone uh, either a happy Chinese, Vietnamese, or Korean New Year. This is... Uh, Chinese New Year today. Year of the Dragon. It is the Year of the Dragon, the year 4710 on the Chinese calendar. I was born in the Year of the Dragon, so that makes it a special Chinese New Year for me. And so to all those people, I wish you peace, prosperity, happiness, and um, goodwill, and Kong Si Fa Chai. Councilman Vaughn? What he said. Kong Si Fa Chai. Councilor? Anything? There? Okay. Uh, it, it appears we're going to begin some rain in the next couple of days, so um, prayers, thoughts, whatever, <laughs> it's not going to hurt. So just whatever, yeah, whatever will work. Let's get some uh, 
Oh, we need to get some water in there. We're going to be in real trouble. I'll go wash my car. So, yeah. Well, everybody wash your car tomorrow. That'll help in the morning. <laughs> so. No, uh, sir. Sir. Next item is closed session in accordance with Texas Government Code, subchapter D, number one, section 551.072, real estate property acquisition. Number two, section 551.087, economic development deliberation regarding economic development negotiations. We're going into closed session. Somewhere around June, I believe, right? Oh, let me make sure Tim's ready. Yeah, he did. He already ran in. He ran in there? Okay. All right. All right. We're going to reconvene back into regular session. Uh, is any action to be taken? Move to adjourn. Second. So a motion to adjourn is a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we're adjourned.